Hi there folks, it's Ilya from Virtual Reviews. Um, not so long time ago I asked in Twitter if you'd like to see an updated version of our collection run through and some people uh, answered, they reacted to that, answered that they would like to see that. Because um, our collection has changed uh, quite much since the last, since the previous video. Uh, many new games have arrived, some games have left the collection. And there was also there, there was also an idea that I would talk about games that have left our collection that aren't anymore on the shelf. And I liked that idea and I thought I would do that. But uh, in an afterthought I realized that uh, to do that I need to do a separate scene, separate clip. And um, then I have to talk about the games that have left our collection. Maybe I don't remember them that well anymore. And I also wanted to do it in, in, in a format of showing your shelf, just showing you our shel shelf and going through the shelf. And while I'm show showing you our shelf, it's, I think, uh, really hard to talk about games that have, that are not on the shelf, I have left our collection. So, and the other thing is that the video will be longer. Um, if I will talk about games that aren't in our collection anymore. So. Basically, I'm just gonna go through the, through our uh, collection here. I'm gonna go um, through all the blocks here and talk about some games briefly. Maybe a little bit more about some uh, games that I'm like really interested in trying because there are many games that we haven't tried yet, or I just love some games that much that I'm just bubbling about them all the time. So basically, this is a collection run through, and I think we can start. So uh, let's go to our. I'm gonna turn the camera and let's go to our shelf right now here. So, um, up. Oh, I'm very sorry for that. I need to put it on the handheld. So um, as you can see here, this is the, our shelf. Um, I updated it. I put some games. Uh, into other blocks, like I, I changed the order of games and uh, if you can see small games are up now and some bigger games are down, it was the other way previously. Now uh, let's go, to, uh, yeah let's go right here first. So as you can see here we have a unplayed games list and yes I know it's really long. Um, it's not only because we have bought many games, but because of our really good friend Kyle from uh, US, um, who each time when he comes to Estonia, he brings many games that he basically gives us as a present. So big thanks to him. And now we have a big, big pile of unplayed games. All right, let's start with uh, a top of the shelf where um, a bunch of some things, there are like Munchkin box here and Once Upon a Time and say Dice Trays and Dice Star Player Mats, sort of a and Guns and Steel rules that I forgot to put in the box when I sold it, but just gonna have to give it to that guy who bought Guns and Steel from us. And now Robo Rally. The first one, as you can see, uh, Robo Rally and Catacombs both don't fit the uh, the Kallax shelf. They are bigger than the space here, so I can fit them in there. But basically, uh, Robo Rally is a game uh, all about like chaos and machines. Uh, racing on conveyor belts, uh, through the lasers, and there is always a danger of falling into pits uh, under the ra lasers, but you can get upgrades and get better. Um, and there will be a streamlined version coming. I hope it's, it will be more streamlined because the upgrade cards are cool, but they were, they were a bit too fiddly with too much text. I don't know, just, just felt so unnecessary. I just wanted to like uh, program my robots. It's a program movement uh, game. I wanted to program my uh, movement on my robots and just see what happens, you know? 
because everyone will program uh, at the same time and then you will review and the initiative uh, uh, who gets to go first and so on and you will just uh, uh, just uh, race into each other and you push each other into pits and so on it's crazy it's fun yeah it's great with more people uh, I would love I would rather play it with six uh, four would be my minimum I'm fine with four but I would rather play with six so uh, a great game uh, even if the streamlined version will come out maybe we'll buy the streamlined version maybe we'll just combine the two versions together and get a ultimate version of Roborale but yeah, uh, this game will stay in our collection for sure. Now, the Catacombs um, is a flicking game uh, with lots of theme, uh, lots of uh, different components, wooden components, uh, where one is playing the Overlord and other players are taking uh, roles of heroes. Uh, we like to play with Elena uh, as a two-player game. Uh, like, I get all the heroes because I want because I really want to control all different heroes and she wants to be an overlord so perfect match for us it's it's a magic game uh, it's so cool flicking discs and having different powers so you flick them some are arrows some are fireballs or the heroes themselves do a melee attacks and so on and you have to think about a little bit about the strategy although your flicking skills come in hand when you want to play flicking games but overall it's just pure fun if, even if I lose it tends to run a bit too long for what it is a bit too long but on the other hand um, as long as we have many things to choose from and ex new expansions I think will be fine with lots of variability it will be really cool you're going through the rooms and uh, encountering different monsters that Overlord will put uh, out and then you get to Overlord, you have to fight him if you win. I haven't won even once, because I think I'm really bad. I need to be more careful uh, with my heroes. Maybe I'm just too careless, I just want to flick a lot, you know. So, Catacombs, great game, stay in our collection. And there is a Catacombs and Castles Kickstarter that has ended already, and it was funded. It got all the stretch goals, and of course we backed it. Um, so uh, we will have even more catacombs style game games i mean at least one catacombs and castles so it will be really cool to combine all these and play uh, the catacombs and castles is a team versus team uh, you can play team versus team where uh, one plays castles and the other team plays catacomb uh, monsters so we're so great so now let's go here and here we have a shelf full of uh, some smaller games um, and Cosmos two player series uh, if you want you can uh, look for a playlist on our channel blender segments and in one of the blender segments we talked about two player games we talked about Cosmos two player games uh, first of all uh, we have a Sante uh, it's a stayed in our collection for a longer time already it's a really cool game uh, card game basically you're trading um, you know, let's say you're buying and selling and you want to get the most gold at the end of the game um, you are buying with cards and selling with cards you need to fulfill the exact amount of things written on the card and there are also um, some special ability cards like humans animals artifacts that you play out and these are some of them are quite nasty and ruin your opponent's plans and help you a lot with a, uh, to, get, to get new cards into your hands or uh, to trade goods better and it's just a really cool looking game as well. Uh, Targi is a vertical placement game with a neat aspect of vertical placement where you have a grid of cards and you uh, play uh, your workers on the outer, outer spots of cards you get these actions plus the uh, sort of a connection between the two workers the connecting spot the center spot of between the two workers is the one that is um, the third action that you will get and there are some cooler actions inside the grid of cards so it's a really neat and cool idea Targi, great game uh, Dracula, uh, Season Cleopatra, 
Barry Rodden we haven't played yet. Sorry for that. Uh, Dracula must be a hide and seek game basically. Uh, to play a season Cleopatra uh, is a card game. Was it set collection sort of a, or? Uh, I'm not sure about them. I don't remember. I uh, read about them a long time ago. Now I don't remember, but we need just to try them. I think they will be great anyway. So Perry Rodden is a pick up and deliver game as a two play game. Sounds really cool. Gonna try it out. And they all um, are nice looking games as well. Kahuna is a two player abstract game. Uh, where you're building bridges between islands and you want to get majority in islands and basically control the islands by getting the majority and if if you have the majority there and another opponent uh, throws you out of there by getting their majority uh, all your bridges will be destroyed so it's quite nasty uh, but it's fast it's um, abstract but it's cool looking and doesn't have many rules just connecting bridges and so on. So Heron Zeus um, is a two-player card battle game uh, where uh, you and your opponent want to find a, a certain artifact, a certain card um, from each other, then you win. Uh, but we have a newer version, I'm going to show you, it's on the other side right there, Thunder and Lightning. Um, this one is a uh, old version, basically Heron Zeus, it's, it's the Dutch version, but basically it's a um, language independence. The new version has text on the card, so, so there were some issues with this one, and I like the new one much more. Uh, but it's still a really cool two-player confrontational battle game with cards. Steven, uh, Richard Bork, sorry. And Hellas is a area control game, uh, area majority as well, um, where you are trying to control islands and temples, and whoever controls a certain amount of temples wins the game. And you are, there is also that discovering aspect, and there are uh, god cards that help you and destroy your opponent, basically. Very confrontational game as well, really cool, uh, has cool small um, ship miniatures and uh, this, uh, whatever they're called, spearmints, uh, uh, miniatures and so on. But it's a, um, it's, it's more of a joke rather than a game I would say, it's a party game where the box farts and it's all about you need to you need to find out who was farting in this game. So, um, not much to talk about. It's Ludovic Montblanc and Bruno Cotella, great designers. Um, but, uh, no comments. Um, Tale of Merchants uh, is a. No, this one, it's really hard for me to get all the games out. Uh, Tale of Merchants is a tech building game with a neat aspect of. Um, uh, Del Merchant has these different animal folk decks and you uh, only uh, get, uh, depending on the number of players, uh, you will um, um, choose the decks that you will play with and the decks have different feelings, some are nasty, some are copying other cards, some are all about uh, collecting goods, some are all about uh, changing the market place, the cards in the market and so on. And uh, the winning condition is to get the um, get your stall done. You need to get your stall done from one to eight. Uh, basically, these are the collections of the same animal type that you need to get out. Uh, the animals have these uh, number values there. You need to get the values from one to eight in your stall, then you win the game. It's really cool. Uh, we did a blender segment for this one. You will see the blender segment on Thursday, this Thursday. So check, check it out on Thursday, uh, I hope you will like it. Uh, Kodama is uh, a um, beautiful game, I don't know much about it, but it's like you're putting cards basically almost on top of each, each other by building up a tree and scoring points, getting spirits and so on. Uh, we got it as a present from uh, uh, Kyle. Uh, so. Uh, it's a really beautiful game, but I didn't really believe in this game and we haven't tried it yet, so I cannot really tell much about this game. Uh, Simon's Duel is one of the best two-player games I've ever played. I 
don't really like Seven Wonders, but Seven Wonders Duel is different. The drafting from the center is different. Uh, you're building out the pyramid, and it's, it's so fast. It's just get a card, get a card, get a card, your opponent get a card, and so on. Uh, you need to get a certain amount of resources, so you, you can uh, build uh, wonders as well. You're going to draft wonders in that beginning of the game. You have wonders. The wonders will give you some special abilities, extra things. And basically, there are three winning conditions. You can win by military, by overcoming your opponent with military icons. You can win by science, by getting six uh, different science uh, symbols out of seven, I think. Yeah, and uh, the third one is basically getting the points. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. If, if you will end the game, if you will draft all the cards from all the three uh, stages without uh, ending by military science, you will just score points. And Archaeology uh, is a wonderful small card game. It's a new print of an old game Archaeology. This is the new expedition where, you, uh, where the art is much cooler and the cards are really nice and sturdy. I did a review of that game. Uh, so if you want to know more about um, my opinion on this game, just look for the review on our channel. So Archaeology the New Expedition, it's a, I, I really like this game. It's random, uh, it's quite random, but I just like it quite much. Uh, World Wars, um, I, we, started, uh, we started watching the um, Canadian, uh, what the, 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 whatever the wars are, the uh, container wars or whatever, the garage wars or how it's called. So uh, basically, sorry, I, I have only one hand but it has really cool art. Uh, basically, your uh, each one of you, each round, uh, is the one who knows a little bit more about the, the treasure chest. Uh, and then the others will get only a partial information on treasure chest and you will bid on that and try to get the things you want and try to make opponents outbid or like eventually they will get junk because you bluffed and so on by bidding too much, you know. Uh, we haven't tried it yet, but I really want to try it. World War sounds really cool. Uh, with all the bidding and it sounds similar to that Garage Wars TV show. Ties of Time, a two-player game. You basically know this game, everyone knows this game. You draft from the hand uh, until you uh, basically draft all the cards and then you will score based on the cards. There are like uh, if you have the most of the green, if you have the most of this symbol and blah, blah, blah. And it's really fast two player game. Um, it may feel a bit too samey. Uh, it's a micro game or only 18 cards, but we haven't played it that much. So we're fine right now. Onitama is a um, Thai Star Essentials. Can't even get it out right from here. Oh, um, where does it, oh. Uh, it's a Thai Star Essentials line. I'm gonna zoom or not? Good. Um, I really like how they. Uh, the box is not standard. I don't really like non standard boxes, but on the other hand, it's really cool box that you can uh, travel with. Uh, it has this uh, roll up play mat and really cool master and student bones miniatures. Uh, the cards are uh, uh, really thin, the cards are cheap. But on the other hand, it's really cool. It's a really cool two-player game. Uh, it's an abstract game where basically you play a card. Uh, like you have some cards in front of you. You choose a card that you want to play as a movement. Then you move at certain spots. How it, like basically uh, it shows you the black is the one where you are sort of located. So the, the central point of that. And then you can move, as you can see, diagonally back. Uh, in, on left and right and then basically diagonally up on two of these spots. So, And you wanna get to... Um, the thing is that the card that you will use will end up uh, at the... will end up uh, with your opponent uh, in two turns and then he can use it against you. So, uh, and basically it's circulating of cards and trying to outsmart your opponents, whoever uh, basically gets the master pawn 
is the winner or whoever gets to the other end to the other temple basically the masters are staying in the temple so if the red master will get to the end of of this play mat to the blue temple he will win so sorry i my brain doesn't work right now at all so um tiny epic kingdoms we got it as a present from uh, kyle he basically all the things it's it should be a uh, second edition there are some things that i think the box is the first edition but the components he gave us are the second edition there I can get it out doesn't really matter i don't know much about it so we're going to just gonna epic galaxies a uh, uh the same series some gaming games um epic series it's a card game with dice where uh, you roll dice and you get you can re-roll the dice as well chances to roll the dice and you get resources different resources that you use to upgrade your play mat to upgrade your uh, whatever empire and you want to try to manipulate dice and get the actions printed on the dice and you want to colonize or or whatever you want to do with with the planets uh, it's a really interesting game we made a review of that so you can check it out on our channel uh, this is the uh, treasure uh, what was the mimic mimic treasure chest oh my god there are some dice inside so i'm not gonna just let it be right now i can't get it in anymore whatever um then we have the kuna versus lucky it's a two-player game of uh divorcing the rabbits are divorcing and so you you want to get the um uh, I don't really remember how it really we played only once we want to play it more because it was a bit confusing it's really hard to talk about this game you want to get the support of your family members of uh, the family members of the courtyards uh, basic uh, so members of the courtyard and whoever gets the, m the most supports will win and the other one will go empty-handed whenever wherever he goes so uh, that's that two-player game artifacts inc is a dice game with cards uh, you roll dice and you have certain uh, numbers printed on the, on the cards that you can use uh, you basically use your dice to activate cards to get resources to sell them sorry to get artifacts to sell them in the museum whoever gets the most points is the winner of the game uh, code names i don't think i have to talk about this one it's a one of the best if not the best party game out there uh, where you're trying to guess your own words but the clues are really narrow and so on rise to power is a two to four you know sorry two to six player game we played as two player and it was really interesting you are building up your city with cards and you need a you need a power source and then you're building up to get uh, basically the most points at the end of the game um, i need to play more i don't really remember it anymore sorry um but what i remember is it's really cool you check it out rise to power i i, I liked it i remember alina liked it as well xenon profiteer it's a uh, deck building game with interesting uh, chemistry theme to it uh, I haven't played it yet it's a kyle's present so uh spyfall uh it's a party game where one of you is a spy the other are others are in location but nobody knows whoever is a spy so you're gonna figure out uh really cool game uh for lots of people party game so easy to explain so easy to play uh then we have this is the paperback um this is a deck building game with thirds, basically Scrabble plus deck building. So you uh, you are playing a deck builder by combining uh, the letters into words and trying to get more and more and more points. Uh, this is the Burgle Brothers. It's a heist uh, game where you have uh, three floors. Uh, full of tiles these are different rooms that you're gonna explore you want to find um what is called safe or what it's called basically you want to f to find the money and um 
then you want to open, crack the, uh, crack the safe open and then on the third floor there is escape to the roof where you basically escape and win the game if you escape with all the loot that you got. So uh, it's a cooperative game, a really cool game. I really recommend to look into it and paperback as well. Team Force is really good designer. Here we have Escape, The Curse of the Temple. It's, uh, it's a fast paced, basically a 10 minute game where you are rolling dice as fast as you can, exploring temple, trying to activate the crystals. Because uh, basically you are in the temple and you are stuck in the temple. You cannot get out until you activate a certain amount of crystals and then you need to get a certain amount of uh, keys on your dice. Uh, but you first need to find the tile, find the room where is the exit. And it's so fast paced, it's crazy, uh, it's lots of fun. Atlantis Rising is a worker placement cooperative game that we haven't played yet. I'm really sorry Clive. Um, the Clive gave us this game, Clive gave us this game, but I'm really sorry we haven't tried it yet, just didn't have time. Uh, Grizzled, let me just uh, change the position a little bit. Sorry, I'm very sorry. The shelf is quite high and I am a tiny guy. Uh, Grizzled is a cooperative game, uh, really cool. Uh, it's it's not language dependent. No, no, it's not. But basically, you are trying to. You have to play cards each each turn, but you are trying to play cards that. Uh, basically, you are trying not to get free of the same symbol, free of the same thing there on the table, and you're trying to cooperate with each other in order to go through the deck and to win the game. Um, really cool game, cooperative game. Result and there, there will be an expansion really soon available in Europe at least. Um, so looking forward to the expansion because maybe it will make the game a little bit easier with the missions. This is a bit too hard. Now uh, Robinson Crusoe is a Euro style cooperative game. It's all about exploring islands, building all the stuff to survive, hunting animals. And there are different scenarios that you go through. We have the expansion where there is a sort of a campaign mode. You need to uh, basically repair the ship and it's really cool. It's a thematic game. It has this sort of a um, legacy mechanics splash. Basically the, um, the echo mechanic in it. And it has worker placement and you always work together and everyone is involved and it's so cool. Uh, Robinson Crusoe, I really recommend this game if you haven't heard about it, if you haven't tried it yet. Uh, Witness is a whispering game. It's a t basically, if you know the game Telephone, um, each one of you uh, plays one of the... Um, it's, it's, it's exactly a four-player game. Exactly four-player. You cannot play it as three or two. It's exactly a four-player game. Uh, you need to play the four, and each one of you gets a book of um, of his character, and um, then uh, you will pick up a scenario or you pick up a a case, and then each book has its uh, own part of solution, uh, part of the hints how, how to resolve the case. I need, I need to whisper in each other ears uh, in in circle basically but it's so hard to uh, remember all that information eventually then then when everyone has whispered it's all the information you will write it down in silence and then you will reveal what was the outcome of the case um, and if you it's a cooperative game if you get the most points or you're a really bad detective and so on. Thunder Lightning, that was the one with the Hera and Zeus where you, um, uh, it's more beautiful, it's much more beautiful, I'm going to show you here. Yeah, it's a little bit different theme, but nah, it's rather abstract, but it's much more fast to, uh, to cards having a text because there are many cards uh, and all the symbols are quite confusing. Nexus Ops is a area control. It's a light war game. I would even tell you, you're on a planet. Uh, you each 
have a uh, your faction with uh, your units and so you're trying to um, explore further and uh, to get points here you get points by battling or completing some missions that involve a lot of battling of course really cool uh, i think it's quite cheap right now but if you want a light war game we, we don't like war games this one is exception this is really cool uh, how it looks uh, how it plays it plays fast i just i just like it quite much blood rage uh if i want do i need to talk about the blood rage we have different expansions here uh, mystics and five player expansion uh, we haven't played as a five player, but Blood Rage is a blast. It's a Euro Trash or a Merry Euro, whatever. Uh, it's really cool. Big miniatures, uh, gorgeous miniatures, uh, gorgeous art, cool uh, Viking theme to it. Although it's, it's uh, there. There's basically you're drafting cards, and then you are playing them out as uh, upgrades, as as uh, new. Uh, monsters and so on and you're trying to control areas but you will win by getting the most points in the end of the game that's really cool it's not a straight uh, war game where you have to destroy another player so Empire Age of Discovery have this is the deluxe version it's a really big box we have uh, the upgrade pack as well here it's a wonderful game uh, it's my top two game of for all the games that I have played so far. Um, it's a worker placement with area control, it's thematic, it's gorgeous, it has lots of layers of strategy and tactics and so on. It's just so wonderful game. I recommend this like 100, 200%. Now, Age of uh, Discovery Empires, Glendrover. Here, as you can see, we have a patch history. Uh, it's a civilization building game, but you're patching your civilization. If I'm gonna get it out of here, sorry. Uh, here. As you can see, you're, you're patching your civilization. You're gonna like put some cards on top of the other cards and you basically get your empire here. You, but first of all, you beat for, for the cards and then you get them. On the cards you get resources, different resources, different tracks, things, military, uh, politics. Uh, with politics you can do more actions and so on. You get uh, this famous people and historical uh, people and and wonders and so on and it's so cool uh, it's in my top 10 of all time i don't remember in what place exactly uh, merchant marauders uh, is a pirates of the caribbean as a board game really cool you sail it's a pick up and deliver game you trade you sail uh, you fight and you complete rumors and missions and so on ah, it's so cool game we haven't tried the expansion yet. really want to try the expansion uh, strong cold is a two-player uh, war game sort of one is defending the castle the another one is uh, is attacking the castle it has really cool bits as you can see here i haven't played it yet and although i bought it i don't have much faith in it i just it's not like it I don't believe that it's not a good game I just don't believe that we will like it that much that it will stay in our collection so it's under the question but we have first to to uh, get to this rather complex rules and get, get them through and play the game Ashes Rise of the Phoenix, Phoenix Born uh, it's a present from Kyle uh, and um, as you can see, all the arts, really cool art. It's this magic type game uh, where you each have your own deck of cards and you're fighting each other with the, that deck of cards. I played it once. I have some issues with it. It's not my style. Although I liked, I liked it. I liked the the play that I had. So I'm gonna just play it more. Um, X Men, the Dice Masters here. Uh, this is a collector's box, but basically I have more dice somewhere hidden I don't remember where but uh, Dice Masters is the one that will probably leave our collection because I cannot find anyone who uh, will play the game with me because Alina for, it's it's a bit too complex for these at least for Alina so it's really sad I really wanted to play this game with her but 
it's it's a cool game. I, I I like this game, but just cannot find anyone to play with, and it became overwhelming with all the expansions, and you know it just feels overwhelming. Uh, then we have the Skyway Robbery. Uh, that's really heavy game from Game Solid. I, I, don't, I mean, like uh, physically heavy, uh, not the uh, game heavy. And it has cool this steampunk um, art and really cool art. Lots of bits and just sounded cool. There's a little bit of that uh, card play, I think, uh, deck building and so on. And it's it's a Euro game, so. Oh my, it just looks great. It's a present from Kyle as well. Uh, we haven't played it yet, but I have high hopes for it. Skyway Robbery. City of Iron, the second edition. We played the first edition, we had the first edition. And the second edition is a little bit more streamlined. And I like that. Have we played the second edition? I know we haven't tried the second edition yet, we, but we played the first edition and it's really cool um, resource majority game. <laughs> you would say that basically if you have majority in any of the resources, you score points and whoever has the most points in the end of the game is the winner and you build up your empire by um, purchasing buildings, different buildings, these are cards and so on. So really cool game, City of Iron. And the new version looks much cooler and much more, like, component-wise, much better. This is the above and below. It is to the story-driven, uh, rather light Euro game, I would say, uh, where you are, uh, where you have your villagers who are working for you. They build buildings. They go exploring the caves and where this, this story dream thing comes up you explore the caves, you read out stories you choose what you're gonna do in these stories and it's so cool, I really liked it it was in my top 10 of 2015 it was in Alina's top 10 of 2015 so it's a really cool game uh, Ancient Worlds, another game from the Ryan Lockett There's basically this is, this is the Ryan Lockett here we have right now uh, I hope we can get I'll bound at some point, and that it will be good. Ancient World is a worker placement game. It lacked something for me. Um, I'm not sure what. Um, maybe it was like just a regular worker placement game. Even though it sounded different, that you need to get the flags of Titans to win the game. You need to basically, and your uh, can get experience. Basically, you can retire your army. And if you and you can slide the cards of your previous army under the new army, and it will give you extra symbols. And it's so cool and neat aspect and the other aspects, but it just felt I don't know underwhelming or uh, I, I don't know what's the reason. We have to play it more. Um, here we have Little Winter. That's a one of the best games out there. For me as well, it's my. It was my top two. Now it's top three, I think. Uh, I already ordered uh, the Winter Long Nights, uh, but I ordered it from Kyle so he could get it to us. So we'll see when it comes. But I think right now, I'm not in a hurry. Um, Alien doesn't like this game. She doesn't know why. She will keep trying. Maybe with the long nights it will be better. But it's all about zombies and people. And I really like the secret objectives of of this game. I really like the uh, like the hidden traitor uh, feeling to it. Like like everyone seems to be a traitor at some point because they're trying to get their secret objective done. But you need to work together as well because you need to get to the main objective or traitor needs to sabotage you or so on. It's a Walking Dead as a board game. It's just really cool. My Mystics, I'm not going to talk much about it. It's uh, one of the best story driven games out there. We have Painter Miniatures, we have the Dumbo Tales, we have the Heart of Glorm. Uh, we haven't played all the expansions. We need still need to get through the first first uh, campaign here. So, uh, but really like this game. It's it's a really simple dungeon raw, dungeon crawl game where you're just rolling dice and see what happens. But 
if we, we, when you go through that story, it's so immersive, it's so great. I just love it. Tail Feathers uh, is a miniatures game, it's similar to Star Wars X Wing, uh, where, but you are you have birds and mice and rats fighting each other on birds. And there's that uh, neat uh, flight system as well, tilting and so on, as you can see. Really cool. I like it very much. Um, but it's still like, though I, though I like the game, it's not our style. So that's the thing. Now let me go. Uh, sorry, here. Yeah. Now, as you can see here, we have Time Stories and all the expansions. Time Stories, one of the best games out there as well in my top 10 for sure. We played the, only the first two scenarios. We have the other ones for a long time already. We didn't have time because we want to play through in, in one go. So it's really hard to find time for, for that. Uh, time Stories, it's also a story driven game. We just go through the story and you just roll dice to get the skill checks but it's all about like deduction and going for the story is really cinematic it's really cool it gorge it's as gorgeous artwork and i think all the scenarios although we have played only two of them the, the asylum and marcy case i still think that all scenarios will be different they will feel different they have really good theme in them so uh, ninjas pirates robots uh, dinosaurs pirates ninjas robots and some sorry Pirates, Ninjas, Robots and Zombies is a uh, tiling game where you want to get the majority of things there. Uh, we will sell this game because it just, it was okay, you know, um, nothing really special. Uh, Beastie Bar, really cool game, although I will sell it because I have no one to play it with, nobody else liked it as much as me. Uh, it has the different animal folks who want to get into the bar and then you're basically fighting in the queue and it's a family friendly game I have the new beast in town here as well so there's quite much playability here and then we have Niet that's a trick taking game with different aspects we haven't tried it yet but it has really cool theme and artwork artwork is the best Valley of the Kings one of the best deck building games out there with Afterlife that's a standalone expansion but basically for us it's the same game so Valley of the Kings, uh, you buy cards from the pyramid, the pyramid will crumble and it's, it's a deck building where you score points only for the cards that are in your thumb and uh, that's the hard decision. So basically either you will uh, use these cards that are in your deck that you have bought really powerful cards or you will put them as a set collection into your thumb then where they will score. And the timing is crucial where you will put the cards in your in your tomb and where you will still keep them in your hands to to use them as special ability or as extra gold. Six nymphs, uh, don't know much about it, just got it as a present. Um, let's skip it. Best tree house ever, you are uh, building your own tree house, you're trying to balance it out. It's really simple set collection. Uh, color majority game. Flip City is a deck building game where uh, cards have uh, both sides of the cards are basically different buildings and you're trying to get everything done um, by like uh, what, what was the conditions I don't remember ah whenever basically whenever you get the uh, a big pile of um, cards of buildings at once like your your turn is flick, flipping the cards your turn is basically flipping the cards is, is a, it's a push your luck uh, and there was a one winning condition if you get 18 or more cards in a row when you flip them 18 or more in a row then you win uh, the uh, the thing that keeps you from doing that are the uh, angry faces and smile faces so if you have a certain amount of angry faces uh, your turn will end and you will do nothing so and the other condition was to get I think 12 victory points in one go as well so Sigil uh, is a card game it's beautiful really hard to explain uh, we did a review of that so check it out 
definitely. And I remember I did a review of Valley of the Kings, but wasn't really good review. Back of games, we have the first series. You can take a look at our preview of the second series. It's really cool, mini games, small package like gum package of games. I uh, like them very much. So, uh, these were the first two shells. I was babbling a lot. I think I'm gonna end it right now and in the next video I will show you these shells and talk about them and then I will go into the last two uh, sorry, rows. So, thank you very much for watching and I will keep you updated on this run through because I think I'm gonna do it in three parts so thank you once more for watching please uh, if you're in Twitter uh, retweet our channel and uh, share our channel with others if you're on YouTube subscribe to our channel we really appreciate all the support that we can get because Really, I think I think if we we'll get more support, we'll, we will most likely get, for example, the press passes for Essen. So in Essen, we can cover more things there. We can just basically record a lot of videos and interviews with famous designers and look at that really cool, uh, most anticipated games. So um, thank you for all the support that you gave us so far and thanks in advance for the support that you will give us in the future and I was Ilya from Virtual Reviews and see you next time bye